as the songwriter side of me, I think it's cool that you found ways to express yourself that aren't necessarily going to be country music specific because you are a songwriter for some pop stars too, like Charlie XCX and, and such, right? Uh, yeah. Is that fair? Yeah, yes. Is that made up? No. Yeah. Do you know this? Are you getting residuals? Wait, I'm from pop stars. Somebody songs. call who, yeah. yeah. Who's your rep? My God, get the money. <laughs> Boys. Yeah. 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 So what? So what is it about like wanting to write outside of the genre that's compelling to you, rather than just focusing on making sure you're writing Ingrid songs only? I think if you really love songwriting, it doesn't matter what genre it is. I just feel like a good song is a good song, and nothing gets me more excited than like writing just a good song. And then I don't care what genre it is. I just like country, and country is more for me because of the storytelling and the lyrics and. Pop is really more of my outlet to just say whatever I want. So you have like, have you had a pop song? Because my wife just wrote one this week that she loves so much. It's pop, and she's basically country. But I know that she was like, I love it. I kind of want to do it. Do you have that sometimes where it's hard to like let go of a song, but you want it to go live somewhere else? Yes. What's the name? What's what's one of those songs? Uh, well, I mean, recently because I've just been writing to write just to get to more songs. Um, but you know, sometimes you do have to be like, okay, what make sense during this time like brand wise like i don't want to confuse people and come out with like a lady gaga sounding song yeah. when i'm you know releasing country music but i do think at the same time you know people are caring less and less about genre and uh just more about the music and so i feel like artists can they have a little more freedom to do whatever they want more than they think um but yeah, it's hard sometimes. You're just like, oh, this sounds like a pop smash, but I can't put it out. Mm -hmm. but so you have to like, you just go and let it go, set the bird free. And... Yeah, because you're always going to write another one. I would say, and you've, I think for me at least, all you've shared so far is like really strong options on songs. There's only three songs available right now for me, right? Yeah. Okay, so let's go to More Hearts Than Mine, which is your actual radio single. It is. And it's incredible. Thank you. This is the second song I heard, I think, More Hearts Than Mine. And I'm a, and again, this goes back to like me being a songwriter guy, and I am like all about lyrics and all, and I'm like super sappy on the inside. I don't know if I come, do I come across that way on the outside, Brian? <laughs> Am I like, I'm not like emotional, emotional. I'm pretty level most of the time. <laughs> but like on the inside, like if you bring up my kids or you bring up my wife, like I'll, I'll just start crying. Yeah. Just in case you say something too sweet. And I'm like, I'm already crying because I'm out of the way. <laughs> But I love More Hearts Than Mine because it's so relatable. And I think from my side, when I was listening to it, I was thinking of some of the families of the people that I dated that I miss probably more than the girl because yeah. the girl was wrong for me. But the family was just good people that were around me. And she was probably a good person too that was around me, but I miss her family. And uh, did and I, would, I was like, did that happen? Like, did you actually take somebody home and break a bunch of hearts in your family? Well, yeah, the, so I, had many boyfriends, but I only brought one back um, when I was in college. He was the only one because I was like, he's awesome. So and, where where's home? Um, we where it was in Minnesota. Home is in Colorado, but we were at our family cabin up in Minnesota, and he was from Minnesota. And I was like, what better time? So I brought him to meet my family, and everybody was freaking out, being like, oh my gosh, he's so great. Um, and then I broke his heart, and he probably hates me now, but they still ask about him. They're like, he was so our favorite. I'm like, that was 10 years ago, like literally 10 years ago. And they're like, he was still our favorite. I'm like, I'm, you're never meeting anybody. Never again. Ever again. That's how it is. It's weird because you you do, like when you're in high school or something like that, naturally, obviously, people meet your parents or your family the whole time. And you have a massive family. You have seven in your family? There's seven of us total, yeah. What's the rundown on the kids? Um, what do you mean the rundown? Names. Like, you must oh. do them in order, right? You go Hana, yeah, Hana, then there's me, then Lars, then Bria, then Britta. So, but we're all, like, very close in age. Like, my older sister, she, we're only, like, 13 months apart. And are you guys all musicians? Like, are you musically inclined? Um, I right? was the only crazy one who pursued music. Okay. We all had to take piano lessons growing up, but then I was the only one that kind of stuck with it. Was the song written about this guy that they all missed? Um, it was more of that, no, because I don't really think about him anymore. Uh, they do, so. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure they would like to believe it's about him. Um, but it was more of capturing that feeling that I was getting of like, oh, I'm going to have to do this eventually. And I just wanted to 
capture whatever emotion that was because I hadn't heard a song about it before and I was like I just need to like write about this so it's I mean it definitely connects I just think like everybody connects with that and and they relate to the idea of oh yeah I was attached to the family I was attached to the